I'd like to thank the choir for a couple of wonderful selections. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, indeed, sister. At this time, brothers and sisters, we will have the reading of the law. Let's begin in Exodus chapter 20. We're going to read verses 1 through 17. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. We're going to read 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12. Verses 13 and 14. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read verses 14 and 15. Revelation 22. 14 and 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, my brother. Thank you for the reading of the law. Brothers and sisters, the law is all important because at the end of the day, it is our vehicle to obtain salvation. The average church in the world today teach that you don't have to keep the law anymore because we're under grace. That is a lie. Yes, sir. Grace was the free <laughs> gift given to us to put us back in a pre sin state, brothers and sisters, by being purged with the blood of Jesus, right? But our responsibility as servants of God is keep the commandments because they are ordained to life, even life eternal. Isn't that right, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. All right, so first things first. I'd like to say good afternoon to all of my brothers and sisters here in Memphis, Tennessee. Good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It is a pleasure to stand before you all on the Lord's Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. Glory to God. All right. I'm Brother Marcus. I'm from the Riverdale class. And reading for us today is your very own Brother Rashad. All right. So we're going to do what we do at the Israel of God, brothers and sisters. Y'all didn't come to hear me. Y'all came to hear me talk about the word of God, right? So we're going to jump right into this lesson. Brothers and sisters, today, the title of the lesson is Interpretation of Biblical Analysis. So why did I come up with this lesson? Well, there's a lot of things that you see in the world with church folk, right? They're speaking in tongues, quote unquote. You know, they're quoting scriptures, telling you what they think it means and things of this nature. So... I wanted to take a biblical look at some of these things and how we, in fact, ensure that we're sticking to that straight and narrow path, brothers and sisters, because that path leads to life. Yes, we're not supposed to turn to the right or to the left. So what we're going to do is look at several forms of interpretation 
right? We're going to see what's acceptable and what's not. In fact, we're going to look at what's strictly prohibited according to the word of God. We're going to find out that, brothers and sisters, no matter what you deal with, understanding is the common denominator. If you don't get any understanding, brothers and sisters, what's the point? I can stand up here for an hour and a half or two and talk to y'all, and y'all scratching y'all head, and it's like, well, what the brother, what, what was that about? <laughs> it's, there's no benefit or no profit in it. You know, it's not practical, right? So we're going to look at a few of those things. Like I said, we're going to check out some things that are acceptable, according to the Bible. We're going to find out what's not. And then what we're going to do, brothers and sisters, since we're dealing with the Word of God, we're going to look at the Word of God from its inception, right, where it was originated, where it was created all the way down to the dispensation to man, how we got it, which means we're going to take a look at the protocol. Y'all know God had a protocol? We didn't get this word willy-nilly, brothers and sisters. There's a specific order of things. We're going to look at that. And then what we're going to do is take a look at the Bible, and we're going to model how you study, how you teach, even how you answer biblical questions according to the Scripture. Not what's in Brother Marcus's head, not what's in Brother Rashad's head. We're going to show you what the Bible says and then give you an example of how to do that because a question was posed to me one time. And we're going to deal with that later on in the lesson. But before we get started, brothers and sisters, I want to preface this with a couple of scriptures that's not in the lesson. Let's turn over to Nehemiah chapter 8. I just want to stress this understanding thing. Because if you're not getting any understanding, brothers and sisters, it is pointless. Nehemiah 8, my brothers. Nehemiah 8, y'all can jot it down. Read verse 8, brothers. What does it say? So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly uh -huh. and gave the sense. And gave what, sir? The sense. It made sense after they read the word of God. They received some sense. Read. And caused them to understand the reading. To do what, my brother? Understand. So they read the word of God and the preacher gave the people some understanding. Isn't that what we just read, sir? Yes, sir. Now let's turn over to uh, Luke 24. Let's take a look at a testimony here in the New Testament. Let's look at what Jesus did. We're going to go to the law and the testimony. We should be able to find some consistency, brothers and sisters, throughout the book. Luke 24, real quick. This is Jesus after his resurrection. He ran up on two guys he spoke with them first, and then he rode up on his apostles. Let's see what he said to them. Verse 44, my brother, read that. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Let's see what he's talking about, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Which were written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. and in the prophets, uh -huh. and in the Psalms concerning me. So that's the entire Old Testament, because that's all they had at the time. He said, all these things that were written concerning me, right? But let's see what happened after he said this to his disciples. Read. Then he <laughs> opened he their understanding. Open he their what, my brother? Understanding. Go ahead. That they might understand the scripture. So we're supposed to understand the written word of God. If you go to church and you leave and you didn't get any understanding, you didn't get served, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now let's get into it, brothers and sisters. <laughs> First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. First thing we're going to look at, brothers and sisters, is speaking in tongues, which is woefully misunderstood in the world today. What the average person believes speaking in tongues means is basically babbling. I'm going to say it again. What the average person believes that speaking in tongues is today is babbling. Where do we get the term babbling from? The Tower of Babel. What did the Lord do? Confound the language. Because everybody was speaking the same language. So he didn't want them to do what was on their mind. So he said, okay, this group I'm going to give this language. This group I'm going to give this language. This group I'm going to give this language. So if me and this brother didn't speak the same language, to me, he's talking, he's babbling. I don't understand the word he's saying, correct? correct? So what we're going to find out, speaking in tongues, is actually 
just speaking in various languages. We're going to see that. We're going to clear, clear, uh, clarify these misconceptions. But let's start. Let's see what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 14, we're going to pick this up at verse 1. He's going to say some things right off the bat, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So in other words, hey, pursue all of those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But he said, but more importantly, desire that you may prophesy. Mm -hmm. And brothers and sisters, that simply means speak what thus said the Lord. Okay? Yes, Go ahead and read. Two. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Mm -hmm. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He that speaks in an unknown language, brothers and sisters, I want to drive this point home. It says he speaketh not unto men, but to God, because nobody understands that person. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Go ahead and read. Three. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. You're going to be edified. You're going to learn something. Read. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But what? He that prophesieth edifieth the church. So you guys speak English. I speak English. We read the word of God and I explain some things out of the word of God. You learn something because you understand me. That's the whole point. The edification of the body of Christ. Read, my brother. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. Read that again, brother. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. Hey, Paul is saying, I wish you all spoke many languages like he did. But again, more importantly, that you make sure you speak in the word of God in your language that somebody else understands because they speak the same language. Do we understand what he's saying? Yes. Go ahead. Mid five. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Do y'all hear that, the babblers out there? Mm -hmm. He said, greater is he that prophesieth, again, speaks what thus said the Lord, than he that what they call, speaking in tongues is really, again, babbling. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is the word of God, right, brother? Yes. Read. Except he interpret. Except he do what? Interpret. Oh, he just threw a monkey wrench in here, brothers and sisters. So it's okay for you to speak in another language, but you've got to interpret. Again, everybody needs to understand what you're talking about. Go ahead. That the church may receive edifying. How many times do we got to say it, brothers and sisters? Now pay attention. Skip down to verse 8. What does that say? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Now, we're under we understand that different instruments make different sounds, right? One of the uses of the trumpet is to call the troops to war, muster them to the battle. But if the trumpet doesn't make a sound that you're familiar with, will the soldiers get up and go to that post to get ready to fight? They will not. If they don't understand the sound that it's making, they're going to stay in their bunk bunkers and, and, and be asleep or, you know, playing cards with peanut or whatever they do, <laughs> wasting time when they're not fighting. And guess what? The enemy came in and destroyed everybody. That's right. So you have to understand and discern. We can distinguish sounds. Like I heard a wind instrument being played over there. I heard the keyboard being played. I heard the drums and the cymbals being played. I can distinctly discern the difference between those sounds. That's what he's talking about when it comes to these languages. Go ahead. Nine. So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. Uh -huh. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. <laughs> so he shall speak into the air. It's all again about understanding, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 13, brother. Read that. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So again, if you're going to speak in a language that people don't understand, pray that you may interpret. So now that word that came up a couple of times, right, bro? Yes, sir. Let's define that for the people. Can you define that word interpret for us, brother? Interpret. To translate orally the words of a person speaking in a different language. You mean you don't change the meaning? No. Nothing is lost in translation? Nope. Nope. So, brothers and sisters, I, I know some of y'all might speak a little Spanish. I speak a little bit. But if someone says, agua por favor, then, you know, I know what that means. Hey, he wants some water, please, right? Mm -hmm. But I had to tell the person that, that what, what did he say? He wants some water. That's simple, right? Person spoke one language. We translate it into another language. The meaning is not lost. The meaning is not compromised. We understand each other. Oh, go get him some H2O. Right? Steve. That's simple. Yes. Now let's proceed, brother. Skip down to verse 18. What does he say here? I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Uh-huh. 
Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also uh -huh. than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Again, speaking to someone, babbling to them, or speaking to them in a, in a foreign language is unfruitful. So Paul is saying, hey, I'd rather say basically one sentence. That's about five words sometimes, right? One sentence in a language that you understand. If I said, look, fear God and keep his commandments. Close the book and walked away. I done told y'all more than a lot of preachers that's going to stand up for a couple of hours or so tomorrow. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This is what Paul is talking about. Read, brother. 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Uh-huh. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In other words, grow up in grace through the word of God, brothers and sisters. Again, we're going to see understanding is the point of it all. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, brothers and sisters. Go to Acts 2. This is the day of Pentecost. Something happened because all Israel, we're going to see, was gathered together in one place to keep one of the feasts of the Lord, which is Pentecost. Let's take a look and see what happened. Acts chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Brothers and sisters, we can show you in other lessons, this is a flock of angels that came in, okay? Yes. This is no uh, spookery, no mystification. <laughs> this is some angels that came in. We can read another chapter and show you how they uh, operate. But go ahead and read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So, brothers and sisters, just for a little background, just like when Moses came up on the bush that was burning, right? There was an angel in the bush. He didn't see the angel at all. Then in other places you can see where the Lord sent an angel, all you saw was the hand, or a part of the hand. In a certain place, John, I believe, saw the whole angel. So sometimes when the Lord wants to do something or send a message, these angels, which are ministering spirits, show up. But here... The only thing that they saw was some fiery tongues. Do we understand? These are angels, and all they saw were these cloven, fiery tongues. And it sat on each of the people that were there that were about to speak because they had to do a job. Read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the word of God, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And began to speak with other tongues. Wait a minute. So Peter and them, which we're going to read from Galilee, they start speaking in other tongues and other languages? Mm hmm or did they? Let's finish the verse. What we do with the Israel of God, we keep reading, brothers and sisters. What does it say? As the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, as the Spirit, the angel, gave them utterance. So they were speaking, and that angel was sitting there with their cloven tongue, translating what the speaker was saying so that everybody else could understand what he was saying. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Like Brother Bowie said, you got to be pretty drunk to speak about 15, 20 languages at the same time. <laughs> okay? That's a hard thing to do. So let's just be, be clear. This is the angel translating what the speakers were speaking. Do we see that, brothers and sisters? Yes. Go ahead and read. Five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation. So you know you're going to get a lot of different languages, right? Yes. Israel is scattered all over the planet. We're here... In America, we speak the, 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 the tongue of the people that are here. English. That's the native tongue in where we were born, right? Yes. But they were coming from everywhere. So you had some probably speaking French, some probably speaking Spanish, and so on and so forth. Go ahead and read, brother. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Why is that? Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Didn't we just read? They spake as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I got some people over here that need to be getting some understanding in this language. I got some over here that need to be getting some understanding in this language. But the speaker is speaking in his native tongue. Do we get that? Yes. Read. Seven. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Peter and them were Galileans. They spoke the language of the Galileans. And he's going to ask a question. How did this happen? Read. And how hear we every man in our own tongue 
wherein we were born. Another witness, brothers and sisters, again, the angels were translating what the speakers were saying, plain and simple. Now let's read another definition of interpretation. My brother, read that, number two, what does it say? Interpretation, the act or result of interpreting, explaining the meaning of information, words, or actions. So it's the act of interpreting, translating what's being said so you can get the meaning of the information, the words, or the actions. Isn't that correct? Yes. Now let's go take a look at something else, brother. Says, I hope we just put that tongues thing to rest. I ain't saying it can't happen, but at the end of the day, it's not about babbling. It's about other languages, like the book say. The Lord say, with men of other tongues will I speak to his people. That's other languages. I don't speak Hebrew, brothers and sisters. We speak English, right? Yes, sir. We're dealing with the word of God, right? Yes. Do y'all understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yes, sir. That's what he's saying. <laughs> That's all he's saying. Let's look at another aspect of this. Let's take a look at metaphors. Let's look at uh, Matthew 16. This is Jesus talking to his apostles. Because a lot of times the Lord didn't speak directly in, at first. A lot of times he gave you things physically to give you a spiritual understanding on something. But he always gave his apostles some understanding. He never left them hanging. Let's look at some metaphors here. Matthew 16 and 5, my brother, what does it say? And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. So they didn't have any bread. Read. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now he said beware of the leaven of these spiritual leaders. The leaven. That's the agent that's contained in physical bread that causes the rise. Right, brothers and sisters? Yes. But is the Lord being direct and physical here, or is he trying to get them another message? Well, let's see what happened when he said that to them. Read, sir. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. So they're thinking physical. Well, what did the Lord say? <laughs> Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, uh -huh. why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Go ahead. Do ye not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? What else? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets ye took up? He said, brothers, I'm not talking to y'all about physical bread. Don't y'all remember what I did and we fed all those people? No, check this out. I'm trying to tell you something spiritual. Go ahead and read. 11. How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, uh -huh. that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? So you know what the master did? He asked them a question to jog their memory. It's like your teacher do in school sometimes. Mm -hmm. So once he asked them that question, they said, well, he's not talking physical. We can put an X over there. Well, what's left? He yeah. asked that question, and it got them to thinking. And let's see what happened. What was the result? Go ahead, brother. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread. But what, sir? Of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Do y'all see that, brothers and sisters? So he spake in a metaphor. He's talking about leavening spiritually, which is sin in, in most cases, right? He's saying beware of their teaching. Why? Because just like leaven is puffed up and it'll blow the word of God out of proportion and will have you walking contrary to the word of God. And you'll be sinning and don't even realize it. Do y'all understand what Jesus is telling them? Yes, sir. Let's go to St. John 6. Let's get another one. St. John chapter 6, he opened up their understanding, said then they understood what he was talking about. I'm going to drive that point home. It's all about understanding, brothers and sisters. 6 and 47, let's start there. What does it say, brother? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Man, that's a good deal. A lot of people just say, well, I believe. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm saved. But there's more to it than that, right, brothers and sisters? That is right. This is starting out good. He that believe on me have everlasting life. Skip down, my brother, to 51 and continue. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Uh -huh. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, uh -huh. which I will give for the life of the world. Now, the Lord just threw something in here. He said he's going to give his flesh. He's the living bread, which I'm going to give my flesh. 
for the life of the world. Now, this caused them to start scratching their heads, saying, wait a minute now, what is this brother talking about? Go ahead. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Again, they're thinking physical, but the Lord is on some spiritual stuff, y'all. That's right. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, uh -huh. ye have no life in you. So not only do you have to eat my flesh, you got to drink my blood too. Now they're really tripping. I can imagine. Like, oh man, he lost his mind. <laughs> we know he didn't perform all these miracles and stuff, but now he's tripping. Right? Yes, sir. Let's put that in perspective. Read verse 54, brother. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, uh -huh. and I will raise him up at the last day. So you got to do these two things if you want eternal life, and then we just learn something on the way to getting where we're going. He going to raise him up when, brother? At the last day. At the last day. So ain't nobody in heaven or hell contrary to what's popularly taught in the world. Yes, the dead are dead in the ground. We can read that to you. Yes. But now he said you got to do both of these things mm -hmm. in order to get eternal life. Skip down to verse 60. My brother, what did it say? Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Look, who understands what he's really trying to say? <laughs> Read. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Don't this offend you? He said, Does this offend you now? The Lord is going to be very direct. He's going to answer so that they can understand what he's really saying. Read verse 63, brother. It is the spirit that quickens. It is what, sir? The spirit it's that quickens. the spirit that makes alive. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what he's telling you is eat my word. Yeah. Read it. Consume it. Walk it. Live it. If you endure until the end, you are going to be saved, brothers and sisters. Yes. That's what he was telling them. But they're thinking, man, we got to bite this cat's arm. Arnold. Get a cup and, and catch the blood that's drinking out of it if we want to live forever. No, that's not what he was saying. He said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Let's get confirmation. Skip down to verse 66. Now he's talking to his apostles again. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with Somebody him. Like I said, they concluded that he didn't went crazy, right? Right. It, they just said, we, you know, we, we was cool with these miracles <laughs> and all this fish and stuff, right. but uh, we out of here now. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Now he's going to talk to the twelve. What did it say? Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Okay, they leaving me. Y'all going to leave me too? What did Peter, the chief apostle, say, my brother? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Uh-huh. Thou has the words of eternal life. The disciples understood. We have to listen to your word, Master. That's right. Brother. They understood that. That was the point, brothers and sisters. Y'all see that? Yes. Now, let's go look at the interpretation of dreams. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Because it all comes from God, brothers and sisters. We're going to see that later. God dealt with the people. And he got answers to give his servants. Daniel 2. We're going to see how Daniel handled this situation. We're going to see if he came up with his own interpretation. Daniel 2. Let's start at verse 1. Go ahead. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, uh -huh. and his sleep brake from him. Mm -hmm. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Then he called all of his folks in and said, look, I didn't dream a dream. I need y'all to tell me what's going on here. Right? right? Read. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Uh huh. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king and Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. They said, tell us what you dreamed, and we're going to show you what, my brother? The interpretation. The interpretation. We're going to give you some understanding, king, on what you dreamed. But there's a problem, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. It's gone from me. I don't remember. <laughs> Go ahead. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, 
Ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Not only do you have to tell me what I dreamed that I forgot, I can't let you know what it was. <laughs> then you got to tell me what it means. And if you don't, I'm going to do all these things to you. Isn't that what you said? Yes, sir. That's a tall order, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Skip down to verse 10. What did it say? The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Uh -huh. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. They just didn't know God got somebody. We're going to see that in a minute. But they said, man, what you're asking us is virtually impossible. Right. <laughs> okay? So what are you tripping on us for? Now skip down to verse 12 and continue. What did it say? For this cause, the king was angry and very furious mm -hmm. and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. He said, destroy them all. They right. can't help me. They're on the payroll living good. Right. Right. They can't help me in my time of distress. Right. Kill them. <laughs> That's basically what it's saying, right, brother? Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead and read. 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. Uh -huh. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Wait a minute. Do y'all see a problem here? The wise men that he called couldn't answer, so he said, kill them. He sent a decree that all the wise men should be killed. Then it said they sought Daniel and his fellow <laughs> to be slain. Brothers and sisters, the Hebrew Israelites are truly the flock of the slaughter. Right. They didn't even know what was going on. They said, well, the king going to kill all the wise men. Go get them slaves and kill them too. Do y'all understand what's going on here? We are always under the gun, brothers and sisters. Just wanted to point that out. That's something, man. They didn't even know what was happening. Go get them and kill them, too. We all got to die. Right. Skip <laughs> down. I'm just saying. We're going to do this together. Man, <laughs> skip down to verse 16. Let's see what Daniel said. Go ahead. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should, excuse me, that he would give him time uh -huh. and that he would show the king their interpretation. So Daniel, the Hebrew Israelite, the Jew, said, you know, give me a minute. I'm going to tell you what you want to know. Right. Isn't that what it's saying? Yeah. Skip down to 27. We're just going through this for the sake of time. You can read it on your own, brothers and sisters. But what does it say, 27? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. Just like not they. All of these so-called smart people, like Brother Bowie say, that's supposed to have some answers, can't mm. help you. Because they don't deal with the word of God, brothers and sisters. They don't deal with the true and living God. So what they got to say is not going to help when things get thick, as they say. Right? Right? Yes, sir. So they can't help you, but what? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Uh -huh. Thy dream and the visions upon, of thy head upon thy bed are these. So Daniel said, the Lord is trying to tell you what's going to be in the latter days, starting with you and going all the way down to what's called the, uh, uh, the feet of the statue that, that he's dreamed about. In other words, he's going to let them know about the hierarchy of the Gentile dynasty, brothers and sisters. And by the way, we're still living in the end of that time right now. Yes. All that's left from that statue are the toes. So we are definitely in the latter days. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes. But this is what this was about. And Daniel said the dream and thy vision of, of, of thy head upon thy bed are these. He proceeded to tell him all of these things that he had seen and what it meant, brothers and sisters. Again, read it on your own. But just to confirm, skip down to 36. What did it say? This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. We will tell what? The interpretation. So Daniel not only told him what he saw in his dream, but again, he told him what it meant so Nebuchadnezzar could understand. Is that correct, brothers and sisters? That is right. But God inspired this thing. He said, give me some time. Let me go and uh, make supplications to my God, and I'll be back with you and answer. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. Now, let's go to 2 Peter, brothers and sisters. It's all about understanding. Second Peter, the first chapter. We're going to pick this up at 15. Now we're going to look at what is strictly prohibited when it comes to interpretation. 
Second Peter 1, 15. What did it say, brother? Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my de decease to, set, to have these things always in remembrance. So Peter's just running some things down. He's saying, look, I want you to understand these things even after I'm dead and gone because the word of God is true and it endures forever, right? Look what he says. Go ahead. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter said, look, we ain't making up no pretty stories to tell you, to entertain you. We're just reporting what we saw with our own eyes. We were there. Go ahead. Where we at? That was the end of, uh, skip down, my brother, to verse 19 and continue. Go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Read that one more again, brother. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. He is not saying that what we're saying is untrue, but he's saying if you have a problem with us, go back and read the writing of the prophets. They came before us. We both make up this foundation, but go back and read what they put on the table. We can't come and tell you anything otherwise. That's for the people out there that think that the Bible is divided. Oh, I'm a New Testament Christian. Or I'm an Old Testament scholar. What you are is foolish. If you don't read both of these testaments, brothers and sisters, because right. they complement one another. I ain't going to be nice today. Yes, sir. That parade kind of ticked me off a little bit. Yes, sir. But see. <laughs> he say we have a more sure word of prophecy. Didn't Paul say, but rather that you may prophesy? Yes. They're all pointing us back to the word of God. Keep reading, brother. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Uh huh. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. In other words, pay attention to what the prophets wrote until you get some understanding. That's all he's saying, but pay attention. Read, my brother. Knowing this first, uh -huh. that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. I can't read something and then give you my opinion. This brother reads something and give you his opinion, or we got five different explanations for the same thing. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. This is what he's telling you. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That's why we all have to get some understanding so we can be on one accord, brothers and sisters. Let's see how we got the word then. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But what, my brother? Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So if the prophets were holy men of God and they only spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost again. That's that holy angel that brought them the message. Okay, brothers and sisters, do we understand what we're reading here? Yes, sir. Again, we didn't just get the Bible by happenstance or osmosis, brothers and sisters. The <laughs> Lord sent this word down to man by way of the angel. In most cases, we're going to read that. Let's take a look at the protocol then. But before we get that, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Let's go read some. Let's go to Revelation 19. Let's get one verse here. He said, no property of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's not open for me to say, well, you know, y'all, I think uh, Jeremiah is trying to say. No, we got to read what Jeremiah said. Then sometimes we got to go and read what Isaiah said. Then you got to go back and read what Moses said. And then you got to go over to the new book now we're in these latter days and see what Jesus said. Put it all together and say, oh, okay, I understand what's going on here. That's what Peter's telling us, y'all, in a nutshell. Revelation 19, we're going to read verse 10. Let's see what that says, brother. 19 and 10, what does it say? And I fell at his feet to worship him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. Why is that? I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Uh huh. Worship God. Pay attention. Go ahead. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now let's do a little one and one is two, y'all. We just read no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. We know that the word of God is spirit. We, Jesus just told us that, right? It says the testimony of Jesus from Matthew on down to Revelation is the spirit or the word of prophecy. So do y'all see the complementary nature of these books? Yes. There's no contradiction in the Bible. I was looking at somebody online on one of these social media platforms. He said, see, you can't believe in that old Bible because see, it contradicts itself. He went over here and read this here. Then he went over here and posted that there. And I said, brother, you lacking some understanding. What you talked about in the beginning is purely physical. 
when you brought this up over here, that's a spiritual thing. You're trying to discount and dismiss the Bible because you don't understand when you're looking at something literal and when you're looking at something physical. Right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Right. Now, it says that the spirit, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit or the word of prophecy. There's no variance between the apostles and the prophets. That's what I want to drive home. Now, let's go to Psalm 119. Let's take a look at some attributes of the word of God, brothers and sisters. The Lord gave us exactly what he wanted us to have. 119, we're going to start at 89, then we're going to skip. 119 and 89, what does it say, sir? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now, forever, time immemorial, thy word is settled or created in heaven. Jesus said, no man is going to heaven except him that came down from heaven. That's the son of man which is in heaven, right? Yes. So it was created in heaven. Did man have anything to do with this? <laughs> no. Not at all. This word was created or settled in heaven, brothers and sisters. So again, we had to receive it then. Skip down to 140. Thy word is very pure. Is what? Very pure. Very pure. You can't do anything to enhance it. Go ahead. Therefore thy servant loveth it. That's pretty self-explanatory. Skip down to 160. What does that say, brother? Thy word is true from the beginning. Uh-huh. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. For how long, brother? Forever. So uh, thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not kill and all that kind of stuff. It's still in effect today? As is this day. So much for y'all uh, out there, like I say, that's under grace that to say we don't have to keep the commandments anymore. <laughs> Forever's a mighty long time, like that song yes, said. Sir. Am I right? Yeah, it is. Now let's back up to Psalm 12. Let's take a look at something else. <laughs> Just gonna do a comparison here. Like I say, he always gives us things that we can understand to give us some spiritual insight, brothers and sisters. 12. And six, brother, what did it say? The words of the Lord are pure words. Said it again, but what? The words of the Lord are pure uh -huh. words. Uh-huh. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. How many times? Seven times. That's a lot of times, ain't it? A lot of times. That's purer than pure, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of pure. Brothers stuff. and sisters, when they're working with metals like silver and gold and iron and stuff, when they want to get out the impurities... They heat it up. They, they make it real hot, what's called molten, right? Yes. Then what happens is that the pure metal starts separating from all those impurities, and, that, and that's called dross. They scrape all that away, so what's left, what remains is the pure metal. So imagine them doing this seven times over. Mm. The Lord just gave us mm. a visual on what his word is like. Mm. Do y'all see that? Purify seven times? Mm -hmm. What preacher got the right to stand up here and try to add to this? Or take something away and say, see, that's not what Paul was saying. No. It says purified in the furnace of earth seven times, brothers and sisters. We can't add to or take away anything from this word. Let's prove that. We're going to go get a witness. Let's go to Moses, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. See what he wrote. Better take heed. Tampering with this word, this pure word, is a very great offense, brothers and sisters, in the eyes of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 4, let's read verses 1 and 2, brother. Go ahead. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Uh-huh. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Or what? Neither shall you diminish out from it, uh -huh. that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Like Jesus warned about the leaven of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They start adding stuff in there and taking stuff out and tripping about, you know, washing your hands and all that stuff and not thinking about the commandments that the Lord gave man. So you make the commandments in effect. When you start adding to and taking away from the word of God, brothers and sisters, you are putting yourself in a very bad position. Okay, now let's go to the new book. Let's get another witness. Let's go all the way to Revelation. Chapter 22. He's going to say a little something else. He's going to tell you what's going to happen if you do this. 
Right. Revelation 22. The last book <laughs> right. and the last chapter right. of the Bible, right? <laughs> this is a great admonition to those who believe, brothers and sisters. Revelation 22, let's pick it up at 18. What does it say? For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Uh huh. If any man shall add unto these things, what? God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Y'all know what the biggest one is? Oof. Lake of fire. Oof. Read. <laughs> and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, uh huh. God shall take away his part out of the book of life uh -huh. and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Brothers and sisters, if your name isn't written in the book of life, if your name get blotted out, you don't have any salvation coming. Again, lake of fire. This is serious in the eyes of God. Do we see this, brothers and sisters? Yes. He ain't playing with tampering around with his word. Okay? Like I say, how he gave it is what he wants us to have. Let's go back up to Revelation, the first chapter. Now let's look at the protocol. The word was created in heaven. It endures forever. It's very pure. Now let's see how we got it. Because remember, nobody has seen or heard the Father at any time. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. He's the only God we've ever known and dealt with, brothers and sisters. Y'all know that? Revelation 1, verse 1. What does it say, sir? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ because he is who revealed this word to man. But it say, which God the Father gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He wants us to be informed, brothers and sisters. Let's see how we got it. Go ahead. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, this is in this particular case, but we can also put that on the prophets too, right? Yes. It said he sent and signified it by his angel. Signified means communicated. Yes. So the father gave the word to Jesus. Jesus gave the word to the angel. And he said, hey, go tell John such and such. Do y'all understand? Yes. That's what John got, what the angel of the Lord brought unto him. So let's see why. Let's see if John then turned around and told the people, because John saw a lot of visions. He was in the Isle of Patmos for the word of God. People talking about he was locked up and all this kind of stuff. No, he was there to receive this word. He saw a lot of visions. Let's see why he got this word and what he did with it. Go ahead. Two, who bear record of the word of God. Who gave his own private interpretation. No, he bear record of the word of God. That word he received, right, y'all? Yes. Go ahead. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. And of all things that he saw. Read, brother. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that hear what the Spirit told Brother Marcus to tell y'all last night. Blessed he. Huh? Blessed is he that readeth. Go ahead, brother. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. This prophecy, read. And keep those things which are written therein. Uh-huh. For the time is at hand. So we got to keep some stuff, brothers and sisters? Yes. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only? Yes. And it says the things that are what, brother? Written. Written therein for the time is at hand. Why is that? Because our time is always ready, brothers and sisters. That's why Jesus said all is lost. If you endure, I'm going to raise you up at the last day. Yeah, bro. Death is a natural enemy that was added to this creation. But guess what? He's going to terminate it. Yeah. That's the last enemy that he's going to deal with. He's going to take death off the table. Do y'all follow me, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. The time is at hand. We have to do what we have to do while we have the breath of life, brothers and sisters. Let's continue. Now, let's go look at Daniel again. Let's go to Daniel 9 this time. Because Daniel the prophet was doing something. Now, remember, Israel been scattered all over the landscape, right? So Daniel was not in Jerusalem. Daniel was a captive in Babylon, brothers and sisters. Just like we are today. We free. Yeah, right. Like Brother Bowie said, go fish without a license. Go yeah. hunt, and it ain't deer season. See what's going to happen to you. Hefty fine and maybe some jail time if you get too crazy. Daniel 9. Let's pay attention to this. Daniel chapter 9. Interesting. Verse 1, my brother, read. 
In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, uh -huh. the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, do y'all understand what's going on right here? Daniel was the prophet himself, right? Mm -hmm. What is Daniel doing? He's reading. reading the book of Jeremiah the prophet. Understood by books. The prophet, books. say it again? Understood by books. So he's, the prophet is reading the prophets. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see that? Yes. So who are we? Mm -hmm. Not to read the word of God. <laughs> y'all understand? He's reading the book of Jeremiah. He said he understood that. That word is again, the number of years. Now we're talking about a particular thing where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Because the Lord told Israel time and time again, if you keep on cutting up, breaking my commandments, sinning against me, I'm going to do some specific things to you. And again, one of those things would scatter us away to the four corners of the earth, right? That's why Daniel isn't sitting at home right now. That's why we're not sitting at home right now, brothers and sisters. But he's talking about the, the time that the Lord said he was going to destroy Jerusalem. Do we understand that? That's what yes. he's talking about, what he's reading about, right? But Daniel is living during this time, and apparently he's confused because he's reading what the word of God says by the mouth of Jeremiah, but he's living during this time. And he's saying, wait a minute now. Some things should have been changed by now. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. So now let's go back and do what he did. Hold your spot here. We're going to come right back. Let's go to Jeremiah, chapter 25. Let's go read the book. We don't have to be, you know, scratching our heads and wondering what Daniel's talking about. Let's go read what he read. Jeremiah 25. We're going to start at verse 8. Jeremiah 25 and 8. What does it say, brother? Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, hard, behold. Hard-headed Israel, go ahead. I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land uh -huh. and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a an hissing and a perpetual desolation. So y'all understand what Daniel was reading about? Because the northern kingdom of Samaria, the Assyrians had taken them out already. Right. This is talking about the southern kingdom of Judah, brothers and sisters. He said, I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar to destroy this place and do all these things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Skip down, my brother, to verse 11 and continue. What does it say? And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. For how long, my brother? 70 years. So are we following the story? Yes. This is what Daniel is looking at. But again, now he's living during this time. And he's saying, hold on. Something's not adding up. But read. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished. When they're done, go ahead. That I will punish the king of Babylon. We're talking Nebuchadnezzar, right? Yes. So we see. So we think. Read. And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Now, brothers and sisters, when you go back and read, one of Nebuchadnezzar's sons reigned in his stead. Is it Belshazzar or something like that? He had a feast and went and drunk out of the holy vessel that his father had brought back from Jerusalem from the temple and all that. The Lord had him killed that night and Darius the Median took over. So this isn't talking about Nebuchadnezzar, but brothers and sisters, we have to understand he was the first one to rule the kingdom of Babylon, right? And even though different nations came in his succession, it's still called Babylon. Because we can, we can read that... Uh, uh, Cyrus was called the king of Babylon, but he was ruling over Persia. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this one went way down into the future. But we have the benefit of having both of these testaments. We understand and know that now. But Daniel is living during this time, and he doesn't understand what's going on. He's, he, I know the word of the Lord is sure, but what's going on here? Now, with that being said, because like I say, the kingdom was turned over to the Medians. You know, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't punished. You know, his, his kingdom wasn't punished in this sense. But this is going to happen in the future, brothers and sisters. But let's go back. Now, I told you to hold your spot there. Let's go back to Daniel 9. And let's pick it up at verse 3. Let's see what Daniel did. Since he was a prophet himself, I'm sure he took the liberty to say, well, 
Jeremiah must have been mistaken. Because it's, it's obviously, you know, more than 70 years. So I'm just going to put this down. Let's see if that's what Daniel did. 9 and 3, what did it say? And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Do y'all see what the servant of God did? Yes, sir. Do y'all see what the prophet did? Yep. He didn't jump to conclusions. He didn't render his own private interpretation. He said, I got to go and pray. I got to humble myself because something's going on. Something is up. Lord, can you please tell your servant what's happening here because I know your word is sure. Y'all follow? Yes. That was the end of three. Skip down to verse 20, my brother. Let's, 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 let's sum this up. What happened? And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel uh -huh. and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. I want to point this out, brothers and sisters. Y'all see Daniel said he was confessing my sin Yes. and the sin of my people. Some of us are innocent, man. We ain't done nothing wrong. <laughs> You got to humble yourself and acknowledge your transgressions. That's a big part of repentance, brothers and sisters. Right. Daniel, like, man, look, I'm praying. I'm humbling myself. I didn't put on these the sackcloth and ashes and all that, and I'm fasting. Let me let the Lord know I didn't messed up too. I didn't messed up. My people didn't messed up. I'm one of your prophets. Can you please send me an answer? Help me understand what's going on here. Go ahead, brother. Yes, before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Uh huh. Yeah, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Now, the books say man that talk like that sometimes, but we know Gabriel is an angel, right? Right. Just like the book when uh, Abraham was in the tent and he saw the three men coming to him, we know that was God and two angels, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the Bible talks like this sometimes. So men don't fly. Fast or slow, brother, this is just a clarification. <laughs> All right, go ahead and read, brother. 22. And he informed me. He did what? Informed me. Uh, to show unto my servants things which must surely come to pass. Okay, go ahead and read. And talked with me uh -huh. and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. I am come forth to give thee what, my brother? Skill and understanding. Y'all see the common thing? No prophecy of the scripture is of any private Prime interpretation. interpretation. Daniel could not come up with his own story. He prayed, humbled himself and said, Lord, give me an answer. And the Lord dispatched Gabriel the angel to go and tell him, oh, you know what, Jeremiah put this prophecy on the table, but what I'm going to do, Daniel just didn't know, is I'm going to give the sense. I'm going to give the meaning for the people that's coming down the line, you and I, brothers and sisters. We're going to put it together. And we're going to understand what's going on here. Go ahead, brother. 23. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Uh huh. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Understand the matter, consider the vision. Now, here is where Daniel is going to get edified. Go ahead, brother. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. How much time? Seventy weeks. Didn't we read 70 years, brothers and sisters? So right here, the Lord just threw a little switcheroo in there, right? He didn't change the prophecy. He just gave the explanation of what it really was talking about. So it went from 70 years to 70 weeks of years. And brothers and sisters, if you do the count, it lines up perfectly all the way up to and including the anointed Jesus. All the stuff that the Lord said. We don't have time to go over that today, but that's that 70 weeks of Daniel lesson. Right. This became 70 weeks of years. Go ahead and read. And upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So y'all see what I said? It says and to anoint the most holy. Who is that? That's Jesus. So he had to come in the flesh, live for 30 years, and then get anointed at his baptism, right? Right. So this is what this is talking about. So Daniel saying like, oh, okay. We still going to be in captivity a little while longer. Hmm. Y'all understand? Now, he was like, man, this place should have been destroyed and we should be on our way back home. Wow. If it was what he thought in the beginning. But now he got some understanding, brothers and sisters. 70 weeks of years. Okay? But the point is, he did not dismiss or contradict anything that he read in Jeremiah's writing. Do y'all understand? That's a good example for these preachers today. Just read the book. St. John 10, brothers and sisters. Y'all doing okay? Yes, sir. 
Praise the Lord. St. John 10, we're going to start at verse 30. Jesus is going to make a statement here. Let's see what he said. Go ahead. I and my father are one. Now, people read stuff like this. They read this and stop. See there? There's only <laughs> one God. Right? But we understand what he means when he say that. I and my father are one. They are on the same accord. Right. Because right now, he's the son of man, flesh and blood like you and I, standing on the earth. And the father God is in heaven, right? Right. So we know he's not saying they're physically one. But they're on the same page in terms of trying to save us, brothers and sisters. What does it say? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone them. They always wanted to put Ready? Jesus, stone him to death. Innocent. Go ahead and read. 32. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. Uh -huh. For which of those works do ye stone me? What they say? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not. But what? But for blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So they understood what the Lord said in the beginning in Genesis. Right? Everything after its kind. Right. So if he's saying that you and the Father are one, then you're saying you're God too. Right. They understood that. But they didn't understand that there's more than one way to be one. Brothers and sisters. Come on, I'm an individual. <laughs> He's an individual. You all are individuals. But guess what? We won. Mm -hmm. We're all on one accord right now in this place dealing with the word of God. Am I right? Mm -hmm. We're all part of the same body. We are one. But they are talking about every seed after its kind. Everything after its kind. So he, they said, this is why we're trying to get at you, sir. But what did he say? Check this out. Read verse 34. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Brothers and sisters, this went right over their heads. <laughs> First thing he said, is it not written where? In your in law. In your law. You're supposed to know this. Right. Then he says, I said, you are gods. Right. And Jesus <laughs> showed up in the flesh. David the psalmist wrote those words way before he was born. So what does that let us know, brothers and sisters? He was around, he was around and he gave the writing. He, gave the, he spoke the words that David wrote. He was God, brothers and sisters. He humbled himself and became a man for the suffering of death. Jesus had been around for a long time. What did he tell those brothers before Abraham was? I, I am. am. Yes, He's an ever-present being just like the Father. But he just said, it's written in your law, I said you are God. Letting us know what our potential is, brothers and sisters. Just, just so y'all know, that's why Satan is so upset. He knows that they were always going to be <laughs> ministering spirits and that we have the potential to be just like God. That's one of the things he's upset about. What the book say? He has great wrath. That's why he's trying to frustrate the plan of God. He knows what we have the potential to be. But go ahead and read. 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. And that's the man, right? Yes. Go ahead. And the scripture cannot be broken. Read that again. And the scripture cannot be broken. Maybe that's why Peter told you we have a more sure word, word of prophecy. prophecy. If the scripture can't be broken, that means, again, it's, it's very pure. What the Lord gave you is what it is. If he said, if you make the cut, you're going to be God, then what you going to be, brothers and sisters? That's what it is. That's what the book say, right? Yes. Go ahead and read. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous? Uh-huh. Because I said I am the son of God? Y'all see that? I'm saying I'm the son of God, and y'all saying I'm blaspheming. But the order of things is man was created to become God, brothers and sisters. You're not going to hear this tomorrow. <laughs> They're going to tell you when your loved one dies, they're going to get two wings, I guess two, maybe more, and fly around into the third heaven to be with the Lord. Because they read Paul's writing and stuff like that without understanding. Okay? Or that, you know, for the smart one, you know, your body going to go on the ground, but your soul going to go to his tabernacle in heaven. Right? 
But Jesus said, I'm going to raise it up at the last day. So, well, you're going to raise the body and then your, your tabernacle or whatever is in heaven you got to meet it somewhere at some time or something. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Does it, brothers and sisters? Doesn't make any sense. But we came here to show you the scripture cannot be broken. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The Lord said, Dust thou art, and unto dust, dust thou shalt return. Yeah. All you got to do is see what they do with a dead body after the funeral, the memorial service is over. That's all you got to do. Even if they burn it, the ash is still going back to the dust. Am I right? Back to the dirt. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, let's read 9 and 10, brother. Go ahead. God is faithful. By whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our now, Lord. Pay attention. Paul's going to give an admonition here. Read it, brother. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing, uh -huh. and that there be no divisions among you, uh -huh. but that ye be perfectly joined together in, in the what? same mind uh -huh. and in the same judgment. Do y'all see that? So much for denomination. Uh-oh. Right? See, we believe this here. And see, we do it like this here and like that there. Hmm. How did God say do it? Lay not to your own because there's only one spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Right? One faith, one Lord, one baptism. He said, speak the same thing. Because if we all read this book, then we're going to be on one accord. I'm not going to tell you, uh, you know, somebody asked, you know, well, brother, what day do we supposed to worship our God on? <laughs> I'm not going to say, well, you know, I think that, you know, God know your heart, so you can go really any day. Yeah. You can worship him any day. Yep. But that is not what the book says. What the book says, y'all? The seventh yeah. day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God, and all your dwellings, right? Yeah. Not the Jews' Sabbath, it's the Sabbath of the Lord. So if you believe in him, you're supposed to keep the day he sanctified and set apart. That's why we are here. Yes. Right? Yes. It says, be perfectly joined together in the same mind because that word's going to fill your mind, the spirit's going to fill your spirit, and therefore you're going to all come to the same judgment. Again, we all got up, got ourselves together, and showed up here today because we are keeping the commandment of the Lord, right? And it says that there be no division among you. The house divided can't stand, brothers and sisters. We all are supposed to think, speak, and do the same thing according to the written word of God. Isn't that right, brothers and sisters? That's what I wanted to come here to get out of this. Let's go to Proverbs. Back up to Proverbs chapter 4. Again, there is no variance between the prophets and the apostles. By the way, just, just in case, you know, somebody you know, out there in TV land might not know, Jesus Christ <laughs> kept the Sabbath when he came in the flesh. He didn't go to church on Sunday. I don't think a lot of people know that. Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to find out how we can all be on one accord. What do we have to deal with? 4 and 1, what does it say? Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Uh -huh. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Wait a minute. I give you good doctrine. That's what you're being taught, right? Yes. Then it says, forsake ye not my law. Again, I'm getting on those folks that say we don't have to keep law. That's part of the good doctrine, isn't it? What we just read, yes. Brother Rashad? Yes. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Skip down to four, brother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my word. Uh -huh. Keep my commandments and live. He said, let your heart retain my words, your mind, and keep my commandments and live forever. Do we understand that? Yes. Read. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Uh -huh. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. He says, get wisdom and get understanding. Do not depart from my instructions. Skip down to seven. Pay attention, y'all. Read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Uh-huh. Therefore, get wisdom. But what? With all thy getting, get understanding. Do we see the point, the common theme, brothers and sisters, understanding? Again, like I said earlier, that's what this is all about. 
You can read the Bible from front to back. You can listen to a preacher hymn and holler and hoop and holler and dance on money and all that. But if you don't get some understanding for yourself so you can know what you need to do to work out your salvation with fear and trembling and save yourself from this untoward generation, again, why are we here? Y'all understand? Let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah 28. Now, let's take a look at, like I said earlier, we're going to find out how you read and study this Bible, how we teach the Bible here at the Israel of God, how you can answer biblical questions and settle biblical debates, brothers and sisters. Forget about what you think, feel, and believe. That's irrelevant. You've been around here long enough, you know one thing. Somebody asks you something, hold on a minute, let me get my sword. Let me get my book. I'm, let me get my phone. Let me turn to my Bible app on the phone. I want to make sure I read it right. Isaiah 28. Let's take a look at some brothers and sisters. Because this is an account where the Lord is looking at, you know, the prophets and the priests that went bad and the people just acting all crazy. Because if the spiritual leaders are fouled, that's a trickle down to the flock, right? Because you know, the people are looking at the spiritual leaders for guidance. That makes sense, right? Isaiah 28, verse 7, what does it say? But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. Uh huh. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So, brothers and sisters, we're not talking about Hennessy, <laughs> Cavassier, Jack Daniels, right? This is spiritual drunkenness. That's why it says they err in vision, they stumble in judgment. We're supposed to all come to the same judgment. If they're stumbling, that means they're making mistakes. Right? Because if you get away from the Lord, you have no spiritual sight. What you going to tell somebody and you foul as I don't know what? It says, so they're stumbling in judgment instead of telling you what thus saith the Lord when you come to them. They're giving you what's on their mind. Like what the book say, the Lord said, if they had stood in my counsel and called my people to hear my words, they would have turned them from their evil way. But like, again, the people are looking at this. It says they have erred through wine and through strong drink. Again, we, we talking bad doctrine here, brothers and sisters. But what it say? Hey, for all tables are full of vomit. How many, brother? All tables. Man, isn't that the case, brothers and sisters, even to this day? Go ahead. Full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. People want to find the Lord. People want to turn to God. Boy, if they find the Israel of God or a place like this, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, ain't it? What you say? <laughs> the books say all tables are full of vomit. You can't hardly go and get that pure, uncut word of God that we just read about earlier from any house of worship that you find out here in the world today. It said they all found. So the Lord's going to ask a question because it's all about teaching knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, brothers and sisters. That good doctrine we just read about, right? Yes. What does it say, brother? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Y'all see the questions, brothers and sisters. Who is he going to teach knowledge, that information, and who is he going to make to understand what thus said the Lord? Understanding. Get all, with all thy getting, Get what, brothers and sisters? Understanding. Get understanding. But let's see who that is. Go ahead. Mid, t mid nine. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Oh, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So, so first of all, you got to humble yourself. Don't the book say, you know, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven? You got to be like a child. You got to humble yourself. I don't care what you thought you knew. When you come to the Lord, you got to humble yourself. What you say. Acknowledge that you don't know anything you and allow yourself to be taught. Like Brother Bowie say, don't head up like a lettuce. Just listen. Give us a chance to show you some things. It says, those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What is this milk, brothers and sisters? That's sweet milk or the word that Peter told you about. He said, that's what we grow by. Now pay attention, brothers and sisters. Read verse 10, sir. For precepts must be upon precept, uh -huh. precept upon precept, line upon line, uh -huh. line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now, brothers and sisters, must is an absolute, right? It is. So when you're dealing with this word, 
precepts must be put together. Okay? You got to read on the line because ain't nothing but empty space in between the line, right? And you go here, read a little bit of this here, like I said earlier, and go over here and read a little bit that there. Because it's all about, again, getting understanding. Brothers and sisters, this is how we teach at the Israel of God. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's Brother Garvin. I don't care if it's Brother D. Berry. We are going to do this the same way. I don't give, care what subject or title we're dealing with that Sabbath. We're going to break it down because that's what the preacher's supposed to do. Seek this thing out. Link these things up. Because at the end of the day, it's all about us getting understanding. I'm going to drive that home. Y'all understand, brothers and sisters? Let's read another definition, my brother. Number three, precept. Read that for us. Precept, a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. So this is supposed to have a certain impact on the way you think, right? We don't know the commandments of the judgments of the Lord, then we can do what we want. This is getting us to act in a righteous manner, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read those similar words. Similar. Principle. Uh-huh. Doctrine. What? Doctrine. Doctrine? Hmm. Didn't we read that a couple times already? We did. Go ahead. Law. Law? Mm -hmm. Read. Ordinance. Statute. Commandment. Commandment? What else? Instruction. Instruction. Do y'all see that, brothers and sisters? So the preacher is supposed to go into this Bible, right? Go grab this from over here. Go grab that from over there. See, this will explain that there. This goes good with that. And then you just keep on going. And before you know it, we got so many scriptures on that subject for that time. We're not jumbling up scriptures about the baptism today or born again today. I'm trying to show you through the word of God what forms of interpretation are acceptable, what's not, and then how you take this Bible. And again, like I said, answer biblical questions. Settle biblical debates. Teach somebody the word of God. This is how he said do it. Do y'all understand, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. That's what we're doing today. So let's proceed. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy three. We're gonna pick it up at verse thirteen. Second Timothy three and thirteen. What does it say? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Brothers and sisters, if that don't ring true to this day, I'm not standing here right now. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Now he's giving Timothy an admonition. Pay attention. Go ahead. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You learned them from an apostle of Christ, right? Yes. Go ahead. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. You've known what? The holy scriptures. No, man, uh, the lost books. No, the holy scriptures. The apocrypha, brother. The holy scriptures. The book of Enoch. The holy scriptures. The wisdom of Solomon. The holy scriptures. Oh, okay. I give. From a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. You know that more sure word of prophecy that Peter just talked about a little while ago? Yes. From a child, you've known the Holy Scriptures. Go ahead. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So we need these scriptures, brother. So this word of God, it says it can make you wise unto salvation. Yeah. PSA, I like to give them out, brothers and sisters. We're not saved. Huh. We have to endure. Right? Pay attention, verse 16, what does it say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. How much? All of it. Some of it, brother. All. Just a little bit. All scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Didn't we read the protocol in Revelation, tw in, uh, Revelation the first chapter? Mm -hmm. It yeah. said the revelation of who? Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Right. That who? God the Father gave, gave to him. him. Right? To give unto his servant to show him things which must surely come to pass. That he signified or communicated by the hand of the angel, brothers and sisters. Start at 16 again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And what? And is profitable for doctrine. Look at that word again. Go ahead. For reproof. Uh -huh. For correction. Uh -huh. For instruction in righteousness. Wait a minute, Brother Rashad. We can correct somebody when they say the scripture wrong? That's what the book says. Ain't nothing wrong with that, huh? Nope. We're going to read. We just have to be patient, mm -hmm. humble, respectful, but make sure we stick to what's written in the book. Knock them across the head with this word, brothers and sisters. It's okay. Go ahead, sir. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto all 
good work. So much for we don't have anything to do, brothers hmm. and sisters. Right over to four. We here. Yeah. Right over to chapter four. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. I have a question, brother. Jesus is going to judge the living and the dead. That's what the quick and the dead mean. Mm -hmm. When? At his appearing and his kingdom. So for the folks that you determined were good, that you put in heaven, <laughs> and the one that you determined were bad, like Brother Bowie said, oh, right, and John, you didn't put in hell, can't be true according to this one verse, did it? No, nah, they still here. He bro. just slew that mm -hmm. with this one verse. But what it say? Preach the word. Preach what? The word. When? Be instant in season. Out of season, uh -huh. reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Well, I just said, preach the word. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's Christmas time or not. If somebody talk crazy, turn them to the scriptures, brothers and sisters. It could be March, and they want to know about Christmas. Give it to them. That's what it's saying. But it says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That's patience, but with what thus said the Lord, brothers and sisters. That's yes. doctrine, isn't it right? Yes. Go ahead. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time is here, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Read. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Oh, I'm going to hire you and pay you to tell me that God loved me in spite of myself. I can sleep with my neighbor's wife. I can steal my neighbor's money. I can do what I want to do. And I'm cool. No? no? But this is what the book is saying. They're going to pay you to lie to them. Tell them what they want to hear. That's them itching ears. Go ahead and read. Four. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. Oh, wait a minute. The book tells you that Jesus was cut off in the midst of the week. And he rose three days and three nights later on the Sabbath. Right? Mm -hmm. But the world say he died Good Friday and rose Early. Early in the morning. Like Brother Melvin say. Easter Sunday morning. That's a fable. <laughs> the books say, the Lord said when he took that last Passover, when you take this bread and wine in this prescribed time every year, what is that, the 14th day of the first month, eight bit at evening? Said, you show my death until I come. Because I came in the flesh for the express purpose of being a sin offering. Came to die for you. He's not worried about you remembering when he was born. <laughs> Come on, bro. But they say, you know, this, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ was born on December the 25th. Uh -huh. Ain't that what they say? Yeah. But if you investigate it, brothers and sisters, that's about sun worship. Right. The winter solstice and all that. See, they right. believed in the sun. Right. This time of year, see, the sun started getting a little bit further away. Light becomes a little bit more scarce. So they be worried about that God getting away from them. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They ain't worried about Jesus being born. They sun worshipers. Yeah. So right. Christmas is a fable. Yeah. This is what we read about right here, brothers and sisters. But what, brother? Go ahead. Watch thou in all things. Uh -huh. Endure affliction. Uh -huh. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist and do what else? Make full proof of thy ministry. Sun proof, brother. Full proof. So we can agree to disagree. <laughs> make full proof. Oh, oh, make full proof. You know what full proof is? When you're done manipulating these scriptures, there's no question left. Right. It is what it is because we already read more sure word of prophecy. And the new book is what? The testimony of the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of the word of prophecy, right? So our job is to read and understand this book and when we're dealing with brothers and sisters with the word of God, we're supposed to make full proof of what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. So now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to model this Isaiah 28 chapter that we read, putting the precepts together, reading on the line, going here and there a little, right, so we can get some understanding. Because one time this individual came to me, and um, I didn't know he was one of them, them Hebrews that, you know, feel like everybody else is going to get cut off and only Israel is going to be saved. I didn't know that at the time, but we were talking, and I noticed he kept saying something, and I said, no, that ain't what he said. Y'all know what he said? Salvation is for the Jews. He kept saying it, right? Got on my nerves. I said, look, bro, that's not what it says. So we met up, and we had us a little debate. 
So I'm going to show y'all, I'm going to model this for you, how you answer the question. Is salvation for the Jews only? No. Or, well, we know, but I'm just saying, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go to the book. We're going to follow that example, right? Yes, we're going to go through some scripture and prove, like we just read, that what this brother was saying was inaccurate. You don't have to, you know, get upset, raise your voice, be mad. You have to get some understanding and study this word of God so you can wield this sword, right? What the book say? The word of God is quick and powerful. Yeah, sharper than any two-edged sword. sword. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So let, let me just show y'all. Let's go to St. John 4. This is how you do it, brothers and sisters. Like I said, I didn't get loud with the brother. I let him go first. <laughs> About 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, he used the Bible, the uh, Apocrypha, the Latin, the German, the Hebrew, the Greek dictionary online. And all these resources. I just used a handful of scriptures. But this is how you do what we just read. This is how you make full proof of your ministry, brothers and sisters. St. John 4 and 5. Let's pick this up. Again, remember that the people in the northern kingdom were no longer Israelites. They were taken out, carried away captive, and replaced with what the Bible would call strangers, non-Israelites, right? It's not a negative term. They're just not Israel, okay? Four and five, what did it say, brother? Then cometh thee to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Uh-huh. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Mm -hmm. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Now, they're at a well. He said to her, give me to drink. So naturally, she's going to think about the water in the well, right? Right. Skip down to nine, and what does it say? Then say of the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Uh-huh. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. How many of y'all knew Jesus was a Jew? Huh? Do y'all hear that in the world today? No. He's my God and Lord and my personal Savior. Right. But he's never connected with Israel, brothers and sisters. Right. She said, how is it that you being a Jew ask drink of me? Again, she's thinking physical, which I'm a woman of Samaria. She said, the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. They wouldn't even talk to them, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, brother. Ten. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, uh -huh. thou wouldest have said of him, excuse me, asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Look at Jesus. He always taking stuff spiritual. Y'all see this? Yes. She's thinking about the water in the well, but he just basically told her, look, you're talking to the son of man that's coming to die for your sin. And if you have, would have understood what I was really saying to you, you to turn around and ask me to give you living, living water. water. This word, brothers and sisters, that's going to clean up your mind, and if you follow it, it's going to cause you to get that eternal life that we read about earlier. Isn't that correct? That's right, bro. Skip down to 13 and, con and continue, my brother. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. The water in the well, but what? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Uh -huh. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. First of all, brothers and sisters, he said, whosoever. Right. Did that sound like just Israel? Sound like everybody. He said, whosoever drinketh this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. It's going to be a well of water bringing up into everlasting life. Again, just to make the point, we don't have it yet. Right? That's right. Skip down to 20. What does it say, brother? Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. This is what the woman of Samaria said. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when, he, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. There's going to come a day he's going to flatten Jerusalem. He's going to clear it out. Yeah, yeah. Right? When he come. But pay attention, brothers and sisters, what it say? Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh-huh. We know what we worship. Y'all see the distinction, the sanctification here? Yeah, yeah. Y'all dealing with paganism and idolatry. We know what we're dealing with. 
Why, brother? For salvation is of the Jews. No, brother Rashad. It's for the Jews, brother. I'm salvation is of the Jews. You read that correctly? I did. It's in red. We're going to read verse 22 again okay. just to make sure that we're reading this right. Read it, brother. Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh huh. We know what we worship. Uh huh. For salvation is of, of the, the Jews. Jews. Now that takes it somewhere else, right, brother and sister? The brother kept saying for. That's why I did that on purpose. He just changed the whole understanding of the book. Mm -hmm. If you say it's for the Jews, that means they're the only ones got it coming. But if you say of the Jews, that means something else. Right. Okay? Right. You got to go to them to get that water. Right. But it's for everybody to drink, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Let's prove that. Let's go to Psalm 147. Let's search it out. We're going to read 15 and then we're going to skip. Psalm 147 and verse 15. We're going to find out is salvation for the Jews only or is there something else going on here? Read, brother. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. Skip down, my brother, to verse 19 and read that. He shows his word unto Jacob. Wait a minute. He shows his word to who? Jacob. Jacob. That's Israel, ain't it? That's Israel. Go ahead. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Same people. Jacob was adopted and given one of God's names, which yes, is Israel. Israel. Yes. While the Bible writes the prophets only have a first name because everybody know they're Israel. Come on, bro. Read. He have not dealt so with any nation. Uh-huh. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Uh-huh. Praise ye the Lord. Brothers and sisters, do y'all see what he had David the psalmist right here? He showed his word, that living water, to Israel only. So when Jesus says salvation is of the Jews, that means you got to go get that living water from the people he gave it to. But you can drink it too. That's right, bro. He hadn't dealt this way with no other nation, only Israel. That's why these brothers be so puffed up. But humble yourself. You are the teacher. Just like Paul said, I keep myself in subjection. Yes. Because he didn't want to be a castaway. You got to humble yourself. Just because you're the teacher don't mean anything. You got to do this too. Right? He says they didn't know his judgments. He's only dealt this way with Israel. Let's search it further. Amos chapter 3, brothers and sisters. Amos 3. That's all the Lord was saying. I dealt with this one nation. I made them my priests. You have to get the word that I sent down to them to dispense to the rest of the world, brothers and sisters. Isn't that correct? Yes. Three and one, what does it say, sir? Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying... Again, brothers and sisters, hard-headed Israel, he's talking a word <laughs> against them. See, against the whole family. We the priests, but we're always cutting up yes. that I brought up from the land of Egypt. What did he say? Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh-huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Now, God created everybody, right? So with some understanding, we know he, he doesn't mean that he don't know about the other people on the planet. Because he even told Israel, you know, you're my vineyard, but other vineyards, you know, I've kept and I've left my own vineyard unkept because of your sin and your misbehavior. Mm. But when he says, you only have I known, brothers and sisters, he's talking about y'all the only ones I gave my word to. Y'all the only ones I dwelt among in this intimate fashion. He said, therefore, I will punish you for how many of your iniquities, brother? All your iniquities. That's why we don't get away with anything, brothers and sisters. Y'all see that? Mm. He's going to ask a question. Read it, sir. Can two walk together except they be agreed? What's the answer, brothers and sisters? <laughs> no. <laughs> if we want to get to a destination that's west and half the class go west and half the class go east, will we all get there? Divided. It's not going to happen. Right. You cannot walk together unless you are in an agreement. That's why the Lord gave us covenants, brothers and sisters. He is a covenant God. 
you want to serve him, you want to get the benefits of, of righteousness and being his child, you have to agree to his terms of service. Isn't that right? That's right, brother. Now skip down to seven. Let's learn something else, brothers and sisters. Verse seven, brother, read it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Oh, so if you want to know what's on God's mind, you got to go get it from the prophets that he inspired. Then we read all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. See, if you want to know what's on the Lord's mind, you got to go read the record he left. Right. And he gave those answers to his prophets. Yes. So it's no coincidence that Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar, give me some time. There's a God in heaven that reveals his secrets. And he deals with his people. Right? So didn't the Lord give Daniel the answer to what the dream was and what it, what it meant? Mm -hmm. Do we see that? Yes. Salvation is of the Jews. Back up to ver uh, chapter 2, brother. We right here, back up to chapter 2. Amos 2. We're going to read verses 10 and 11, just for confirmation. Read it, sir. Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. And? I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites. Uh-huh. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? O ye who? Children of Israel, saith the Lord. So y'all see that, brothers and sisters? The same people that he freed from Egypt, that he took out of the house of bondage, he said, I raised up of your sons for prophets. So much for uh, Muhammad of Arabia <laughs> and Krishna and all these other folk. The Lord didn't deal with them, brothers and sisters. I'm not being derogatory. I'm just being actual and factual right, right now. Right. Didn't the Bible say that? Yes. I raise up of your sons for prophets. Is it not even so, O ye children of Israel, said the Lord. So you got to go and get this word again, brothers and sisters, from the holy prophets. Because they are inspired by God. That's the point. Now let's go to Acts 10. When I turned over here, the brother said, man, everybody always want to go there. I said, brother, it's in the Bible. Right. You <laughs> use sources and references outside the Bible. I'm just sticking to the book. This is, didn't, didn't it say those things that are written? Keep those right. things that are written therein? Right. This is a part of the written word of God. Right. He was a little upset about it. I said, hey, what you want me to do, man? <laughs> Everybody always want to go there. Hey, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> All I know is this is in the book, and this is what I deal with. All servants of God should deal with. So because it's here, a lot of Hebrews, you know, they say try to lie and try to make this brother Cornelius an Israelite. The book clearly says what he is. Right. Okay? We're going to read it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, y'all got to be, you know, what y'all smoking, man? <laughs> Don't make the man a Hebrew. That's desperation right there. But anyway, Acts 10 and 1, what did it say, brother? We almost there, y'all. Now, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. What band, sir? Italian. Italian. European. You can go to Genesis 10 and read the Table of Nations, and you can look at just about where everybody comes right. from. Okay? And Italians do not come out of the lineage of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> okay? Read, brother. Two. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, he didn't know the true and living God, but look at his attitude, brothers and sisters. Maybe that's why the Lord chose him to be the one that I'm going to open up the door, right, to the Gentiles under the new covenant. I'm going to let this guy be the first one in. He had a heck of an attitude, a positive attitude, y'all. Skip down to five, and what does it say? Because he, he ran into an angel. The angel's going to give him some instructions. There's a reason for that. Go ahead. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose sure name is Peter. But he's talking to the angel. Why didn't the angel just tell him what he wanted to know? He said, go get Peter, man. Right. The Hebrew. Go ahead. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. He shall do what? Tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Mm, salvation is of the Jews. Peter's a Jew. You want to know how to serve me? Go 
and seek Peter. He's going to tell you what you ought to do. Let's skip down to 19 for the sake of time. You know, Peter uh, had a vision. He was on the housetop, and the sheet came down with all the stuff on it and all that. Read that on your own. People go here to try and lie and say, see, the Lord terminated the dietary law. <laughs> but if you read the narrative on your own, Peter said, not so, Lord. Right. I have never eaten anything common or what, brother? Unclean. Unclean. So this could not be talking about the termination of the dietary law, right? PSA, brothers and sisters, the apostles kept the dietary law. Okay? Verse 19, sir, what does it say? While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Uh -huh. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. If the angel hadn't told Peter this, Peter wasn't going, y'all. Because Jesus had given a directive at a certain time. Don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Y'all follow? Yes, Matthew sir. 10. So just like the woman said, y'all don't have no dealings with us. You're a Jew. What you talking to me for? Go ahead and read. We're skipping down to verse 25. Go ahead. Thank you, brother. Read. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Y'all see what he did once yeah. Peter got there? It said, this brother fell down at his feet and worshipped him. I know a lot of these Hebrew Israelites would love that. Yeah, I bet. Because they want to be worshipped low-key. But all the glory belong to God, brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. We are just vessels. Yes. Look what Peter said. Go ahead. 26. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. I'm a man just like you. Get up, like the angel told John. Worship God. Come on. Bro. Right? Come on. Go ahead. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Now, Peter, I know he's probably like, whoa, what's going on here? I know the angel then told me to come, but why are all these Gentiles in here? Why would they want for me? <laughs> right? That's just putting that in perspective. This is probably what's going on in his head. Well, let's read 28. What did it say? And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation? Brothers and sisters, again, I'm, I'm a practical person. First he said it was unlawful, like I said. Read Matthew 10. You'll see why he said that. He said, For a man that is a Jew, he's talking about himself, to keep company or come unto one of what kind of nation, sir? Another nation. Another nation. That means Cornelius them couldn't be Jews or Israelites, right? That is what that means. Come on, Hebrews. Humble yourself. Stop trying to make this brother a Hebrew Israelite. He's an <laughs> Italian. Because y'all don't want to believe the word of God as it is written. Right. Continue, sir. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That's what the vision was really trying to prepare right. Peter to understand. Right. All men can get salvation. Skip down to 33 and read that. What does it say? Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, this is Cornelius talking to Peter. The angel told me what to do. I sent for you, and you've done well that you come. But go ahead. What did he say? Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? Y'all see what this brother said? We're ignorant. We don't know. We got the heart and the mind to serve, but we don't know what we're supposed to do. So the angel had me call you, Mr. Jew, to come, it says, and hear all things that are commanded you, the Israelite of God. That's what this is about, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Because before that, Israel didn't quite know this. Read. But in every nation. How many nations? Every nation. Read. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. How simple is that, brothers and sisters? Very. Didn't Jesus say, whosoever? Yes. Read, brother. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. He sent to who, brother? Children of Israel. Salvation is of the Jews. Mm. Read. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That's why Paul said the Lord broke down that middle wall of partition that used to exist between his people and the strangers and the Gentiles and stuff. He's reconciling everybody into one body, brothers and sisters. Do we understand that? Yes. Read. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea uh -huh. and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Go ahead. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Peter's just running some stuff down. Read, brother. And we are witnesses of all things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. That's why Peter said we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yes. Go ahead. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Let's see who he showed him to. Go ahead. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God. Who was that? Even to us. Oh, even to us. Didn't he say uh, that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation? Mm -hmm. So he's talking about me and the rest of the apostles, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. And we read that in Paul's writing, right? Yes, we did. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. Read verse 43, sir. To him give all the prophets witness. How many of the prophets, brother? All the prophets. To him, Jesus, brothers and sisters, give all the prophets witness. Read. That through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin. Can you please read that second half again, sir? Yes. That through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. Sound like anybody can get salvation, according to what we're reading, right? Yes. This is what I'm seeing. What about y'all? Yep. St. John 10, brothers and sisters, we got two more after this. Y'all doing all right? Yes, sir. Praise God. I tried to make it clear to the brothers. <laughs> God destroying everybody but Israel belies what the books say. Right. <laughs> Bible don't support that. Look, I was just speaking with one of the brothers the other day. Israel knew they were Israel when they got scattered. Am I right? A lot of us today are finding out who we are, but back then, they knew who they were. But did knowing that they were Israelites keep them from getting kicked out of the land? Well, there goes that special thing they think about us. That should have been enough to keep us in the land. <laughs> we Israel. Right. It did not. <laughs> St. John 10, we're going to read verse 7, and then we're going to skip. Go ahead, sir. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the Savior. You want salvation, you got to go through me. That's why he said what he said to the woman at the well, brothers and sisters. Skip down to nine. What does it say? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in. Any what? Any man enter oh, in. Go ahead. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Skip down to 14, sir. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep uh -huh. and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Wow, that's something, isn't it, brothers and sisters? Read verse 16. What does it say? Pay attention. Please pay attention. What does it say? And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, uh -huh. them also I must bring. Brothers and sisters, sheep, we're talking people, right? Yes. He said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, they are not of the house of Israel. But he said, them also I must bring. He's the savior of the world, brothers and sisters. God so loved the world. Right? Right? Yes. He said, he must bring. Read. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, it's going to be one family. Y'all know what that is? God. Isn't that plain? Yes. He's doing all this with all these people, starting with Israel. We're supposed to have been, have supposed to have been an example, a model for the rest of the world to look at. What the books say, that we're supposed to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, brothers and sisters. To draw all men to God. That's why he say, he got to bring them. There shall be one fold and one shepherd, and that one shepherd is the Lord Jesus, brothers and sisters. Because he's coming, he's going to establish his kingdom first. A lot of people don't understand that. Way before the Father's kingdom comes down, New Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, you got to deal with the kingdom of the Son. Isn't that right? Well, let's go to Isaiah 56. 
get a little more confirmation just for these brothers. Now, this is, this is what trips me out, brothers and sisters. This is the Old Testament. I guess they do like, you know, other folk do. They cherry pick, huh? This is Isaiah the prophet. This ain't Paul. <laughs> right. Okay? Let's read some stuff. I don't know how you can conclude that only Israel is going to be saved if you read any of this. Verse 1, what does it say, brother? Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. That's at a time appointed, but now skip down to verse 3 and read. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord. Wait a minute, brother. I got to stop you. Please forgive me for interrupting you. He said, neither let the son of the stranger. We're talking now in Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. That have joined himself to the Lord. Yes. Come on. Bro. They serve as a God. But they're not Israel. Mm -hmm. Not physically. Right. Right? Three, brother. Me three. Speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Take hold of what? My covenant. So the strangers and the eunuchs can take hold of the Lord's covenant? Yes, sir. Read, brother. What's going to happen? Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. That sounds like salvation to me. Mm -hmm. What about y'all? Yes, he said, in my house and in my walls, they're going to be in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. A name better than of sons and daughters. He's going to give them an everlasting name. You have an everlasting name. That means you got to do what? Live forever. Free, brother. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves with the Lord to serve him uh -huh. and to love the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. to be his servants. Everyone that keep up the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant. What are you going to do, bro? Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. And do what? Make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. What else? For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. For some people, for all people. A handful of people, brother. All people. A few people, brother. For all people. All doesn't leave anybody out, does it, brothers and sisters? No, it does not. The Lord said his house is going to be a house of prayer for all people. Yeah. I don't care where you come from. We are all sons and daughters of Adam. Yes. Do we understand that? That's why Jesus said what he said again to the woman at the well. If you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me to give you living water. Right? Revelation 22, last place, brothers and sisters. Hope I didn't keep y'all too long. Revelation 22. Let's read verse 12 first, and then we're going to skip. Revelation 22 and 12. Go ahead, sir. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. This is Jesus talking about his second coming. He said his reward is with him again. If it's with him and he's not here yet, who's got salvation? Who's saved? Nobody saved yet. And it says he's going to give it according to every, every man's work, work brothers be. and sisters. There you go. Skip down to 15, my brother. Excuse me, 16. What does that say? I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Uh -huh. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Again, he was before Abraham, brothers and sisters. Been around forever. He's letting you know who he is and what office he holds. Verse 17, pay attention, y'all. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Uh -huh. And let him that heareth say, come. Uh -huh. And let him that is a thirst come. Uh -huh. And whosoever will. And whosoever will. Yes. The Hebrew is like brother. Whoso, whosoever will. The Jew. Whoever will. The, just, just the, you know, the righteous person, man. Whomever. Whosoever will. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your condition is. Whosoever will. If you have the desire to yes. do this. Do what, my brother? Let him take the water of life freely. Didn't the, the Lord tell you that he got a, a wine and milk without price? Mm. Cost you a little or nothing to buy a Bible. Mm. But brothers and sisters, the impact and implication of reading this word 
is everlasting. That's what the Lord say. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So I believe that I answered the brother's question. When he said salvation was for the Jews, he was in error. No, it's not. It's for everybody. You just have to go and get the word that he gave the Jews of Israel because that's the only nation he dealt with. Didn't we read that, brothers and sisters? So I hope I cleared that up for the brother. But just a quick recap, brothers and sisters. We touched on forms of interpretation that are acceptable in understanding that, for example, speaking in tongues is not babbling. Like I say, some people think that that sanctifies them or makes them you know, special or something because they do that. But the fact is tongues merely means different languages. We saw that. But you have to have an interpreter to understand what's been said. Or it's, it's worthless. Like the Paul said, he, Paul said, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Then we saw the interpretation of metaphors, like when Jesus was talking about the leavening of bread of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and when he talked about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He uses these things, you know, physical, literal examples, to give us a spiritual understanding on things he wants us to know, brothers and sisters. And then, like I said with uh, Daniel, we could have went and read Joseph, you know, when he had his dream. The Lord gave these brothers the understanding because they're Israel. Didn't he say he would do nothing but reveal his secret to his servants and prophets? Like I say, the king was ready to kill everybody. Daniel said, hold on. Don't be so hasty. Give me a moment. I'll get back to you and let you know what you need to know. We saw that. And then Peter gave us a great admonition, a great warning. He said, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Because that would mean that when you read something in the book, all of us can have our own opinion on it and it be valid. It doesn't work that way. You cannot have your private interpretation. That's why Daniel, when he was reading Jeremiah the prophet, prayed and asked the Lord for understanding. Then we took a look at the attributes of this word, brothers and sisters, where it was conceived in heaven, where no man has ever been, and sent down to us. We saw the protocol. Again, the revelation of Jesus Christ that the Father God gave to him to show unto his servants. He gave that to the angels to communicate to us, brothers and sisters, specifically Israel, and then for the rest of the world, right? We read that, and then, brothers and sisters, we saw, like I say, how you read this Bible, how you study this Bible, right? How you can teach this book, and how you can answer questions and settle debates, all by going here and there, brothers and sisters, putting those precepts together so that you can get some understanding, because that's what this is all about. Again, interpretation of biblical analysis. I thank you all for your time.